Hello, my dear friends. Uh, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the uh, YouTube channel of Dr. Royals. And we have got a wonderful uh, session planned for you. Audiogram. You know, audiogram is a very complicated topic and a lot of students find it difficult. So I thought, why not? Like, you know, we have got a very famous thing in medicine called ECG made easy. I said, why not in ENT do audiogram made easy? Guys, what is audiogram? When I say audiogram, I mean pure tone audiometry, PTA, very famous test. Anybody who has got a hearing loss definitely would need this test called PTA, pure tone audiometry or audiogram. Now, what are the questions which an audiologist has to answer when he's doing this test? First of all, PTA test, the audiogram test is not done by ENT people. It is done by our colleagues who are audiologists and they are part of in department and any patient who has got hearing loss after the history taking examination and tuning folk tests which we do in the clinic, we refer the patient for pure audiometry. Now the, what are the questions in the mind of the audiologist which he need to answer after doing audiogram? Number one, is this patient having hearing loss? Number two, what type of hearing loss? And number three, how much is the hearing loss? So audiometry is about, you can say, quantifying the hearing loss, how much it is, and describing what type of the loss it is. So friends, let us go further and let us understand what are the two different types of hearing loss. You all know it's either conductive hearing loss or sensory neural hearing loss. Now how to ascertain which disease will cause conductive and which will cause sensory neural hearing loss. Now, to just make it simple, as the session says that it's a audiogram made easy, imagine the ear like a train. This train of ear has got four compartments. The compartment number one, two, three, and four. Audiogram made easy, first of all. You know, let us understand in a very conceptual way that ear is an is a train with four compartments. The first compartment is of course external ear. Then the second one is the middle ear where your ossicles are there. And then you have got the inner ear. And I'm sure you know when I say inner ear, I mean cochlea. And then we have got the eight now. Eight now. So these are the four compartments of the train. Guys, to make it very simple for you, if the problem is in the first and second compartment, this is conductive hearing loss. If the problem is first and second compartment, it will lead to conductive hearing loss. And if the problem is in the third and fourth compartment, it is called sensory neural hearing loss. Sensory neural, two words. Sensory means cochlear problem. Neural means eighth nerve problem. Sensory neural. So this is sensory, this is neural. Okay, I hope it is clear that broadly, if you can say any problem in the external ear and the middle ear will lead to conductive hearing loss. Any problem in the cochlea and the eighth nerve will lead to sensory neural hearing loss, a very basic thing. Now, so conductive hearing loss, guys, please see on the screen, any problem from here to here. This is the area of the conductive hearing loss. Can you see this yellow line? Okay, this yellow arrow, any problem from the external ear and the middle ear will lead to conductive hearing loss. Can we think about few examples of conductive hearing loss? Yes, I think they're very simple. Number one, wax. Wax can cause conductive hearing loss. Yes. CSOM. Somebody has got a perforation in the tympanic membrane with ossicular erosion. Yes. Conductive hearing loss. Glue ear or serous otitis media a very important topic and the commonest cause of hearing loss in children. Glue ear, when there is a lot of glue in the middle ear, of course will cause conductive hearing loss. Fourth one, otosclerosis. My dear friends, otosclerosis means fixation of the foot plate of stapes. We all know stapes works like a piston. If the piston is jammed, it's called otosclerosis. Okay. So, all problem external ear, middle ear will lead to conductive hearing loss. And if I can really say, you know, any problem up till the foot plate of stapes 
will lead to conductive hearing loss. Let's go further. Sensory neural hearing loss. Now let's let's focus at this part now. Any problem in this area or any problem in this area. Can you see two star, one yellow star, and then this eight now? Any problem in these two part will lead to sensory neural hearing loss. Okay, and you can say okay that you would agree this is sensory and this is neural sensory and neural okay so a sensory neural hearing loss is further of two types either the problem in the cochlea or the problem is in the eight now okay now sensory neural hearing loss is further of two types cochlear or retrocochlear when i say retrocochlear mean neural neural okay now the classical example of cochlear hearing loss is menius disease guys I'm sure you'll be remembering the classes or you would have read somewhere Menius disease is glaucoma of ear. Glaucoma of ear, beta. like in glaucoma, high intraocular pressure damages the optic nerve. Similarly, in Menius disease, high endolymphatic pressure in the inner ear is going to damage the cochlea gradually. So Menius is glaucoma of the ear. So, Menius damages cochlea gradually due to high endolymphatic pressure. So, Menius is a classical example of cochlear hearing loss. Regarding retrocochlear, the neural problem, a caustic neuroma, the eighth nerve tumor, it's a classical example of retrocochlear hearing loss. So, sensory neural hearing loss, SNHL, is further of two types, cochlear problem or retrocochlear. Cochlear the example is Meniere's and retrocochlear, the example is a caustic neuroma. So, when I say retrocochlear, I mean neural problem. Mostly SNHL are cochlear in nature. Okay? Now, let us go further. So, these are two different types of hearing losses. Let's go further. Now, the sen next one is the two methods of the sound conduction sound conduction what are two different methods of sound conduction either you can say it can be air conduction or it can be bone conduction air conduction or bone conduction air can conduct sound bone can conduct sound also guys remember physics physics says that you know sound can travel through air also solids also liquids also okay so similarly here also sound energy can reach us through air conduction or bone conduction let us discuss them one by one Number one, air conduction. Guys, air conduction. Air conduction is a natural way of hearing. When you and me are sitting in the same room, what is the medium between you and me? Air. Air. My sound energy travels via air and it enters your external artery canal and that stimulates your ear. So, mostly we hear through air conduction. So, air conduction is natural way of hearing. Means, it goes through all compartments. First, second, third and fourth of the train. It start from the external artery canal and end till the eighth now. So, air conduction is a natural way of hearing. I think you would agree with me if I say like this. Look at this, this one. This is your air conduction going with. Do you see? This is your air conduction going like this. Through the external artery canal, tympanic membrane, all the ossicles and then cochlea and then through the ninth nerve. Ninth nerve. Okay, so this is your air conduction and I think you would agree with me if I say air conduction is a complete test of hearing. Air conduction is a complete test of hearing. Can, can you understand? Air conduction is going to test the all the four compartment train because it's traveling along the natural path of hearing. Okay, so air conduction is a complete test of hearing because air conduction is passing through all four compartments of the train. So, this line to remember, air conduction is a complete test of hearing, my dear friend. Air conduction is a complete test of hearing. Okay, fine. Now, let us talk about bone conduction. Guys, solids can also conduct sound. And I'm sure you know, ear is lying within temporal bone of the skull. So, the sound energy can travel through solids also. I'm sure you would have done this in your childhood when you keep your ear in contact with the railway track. When the train is not visible, the rumbling sound of the train coming to you can be heard through the ear when your pinna is in contact with the railway track and solids can also conduct sound. This story must be remem must, must remind you of the, you know, solid con solids conduct sound also. So, bone can also conduct sound. Okay. Now, next one. Bone conduction is a, mostly a test for us 
or an alternative path of hearing you can say naturally we hear through air conduction but yes if air conduction is not working we can utilize the bone conduction with special devices to make you hear also so bone conduction is mostly a test for the ENT people and audiologists when uh, it can be used as an alternative pathway for hearing for those people in which air conduction cannot be used to make you hear okay so now once again over here bone conduction is going from here guys please see this is your bone okay now look at me when I keep the tuning fork over here on the bone this sound energy directly enter the bone skull bone and via the bone 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 it enters the cochlea and it enter the eighth nerve and goes to the brain guys can you see one thing bone conduction is only checking the cochlea and the eighth nerve so bone conduction is an incomplete test of hearing may i remind you air conduction is a complete test of hearing bone conduction is an incomplete test of hearing because you can see through the bone of the skull the sound energy is directly entering into cochlea and then going to the eighth now so guys if i ask you one question everybody write the chat box whether bone conduction will be poor in conductive hearing loss or sensory neural hearing loss bone conduction would be poor in conductive hearing loss or sensory neural hearing loss what's your answer on this okay write in the chat box i think you would agree with me if i say that bc poor means sensory neural hearing loss okay bone conduction poor means sensory neural hearing loss guys Yes, very simply, air conduction is a complete test of hearing. Bone conduction only checks cochlea and eighth nerve. Any problem in cochlea and eighth nerve will lead to SNHL. So, bone conduction poor will point towards sensory neural hearing loss. Am I clear? Very good. Wonderful answer. Very good. Please participate. Yes, very nice. Very nice. Let us summarize what we have learned till now. In conductive hearing loss, please see. In everybody is think with me, Mita. In conductive hearing loss, the problem is in the external ear and the middle ear. Okay, so ear conduction will be poor. Okay, but bone conduction will be normal. Don't forget, bone conduction checks cochlea and eighth nerve. In conductive hearing loss, cochlea and eighth nerve are normal. In conductive hearing loss, the problem lies in the external ear and middle ear. So, in conductive hearing loss, AC is poor, affected, but bone conduction is normal because now my concept is clear that air conduction checks all path, parts of the hearing, but bone conduction only checks cochlea and eighth nerve. In conductive hearing loss, cochlea and eighth nerve are normal, so bone conduction is normal in conductive hearing loss, but air conduction is poor. Now, my dear friends, it's your turn to re reply. What about sensory neural hearing loss? In SNHL, what will be affected? AC or BC? You have, to, you have to answer this question. In SNHL, what will be affected? What will be poor? AC will be poor or BC will be poor or both will be poor. Think about it. In SNHL, cochlea problem. Cochlea is a problem in SNHL. Mostly SNHL is cochlear. In SNHL, cochlea is a problem. Cochlea has a disease. What will be poor? AC will be poor, BC will be poor, or both will be poor? What is your answer? What will be poor? AC will be poor, BC will be poor, or both will be poor? Now, everybody look at this. Let me answer this question for you, everyone. Look at this picture again, everybody. Look at this picture again. Guys, please see. Where lies the problem in SNHL, in the cochlea? Look at the star. Look at the star, beta. Look at the star, everybody. So the cochlea has a problem in SNHL mostly. Okay. Now please see. Air conduction goes from here, here, and where enter here. And bone conduction enter via bone, 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 enter here. Yeah, did you notice one thing? Either you go through air conduction or you go through bone conduction, you have to go through cochlea only. You go this way, air conduction, or you go this way, bone conduction. Eventually, you are going to enter the cochlea only. Am I clear? Fine. So in SNHL, both AC and BC will be poor. Please understand. Air conduction also reaches cochlea. Bone conduction also reaches cochlea. In SNHL, cochlea is not working properly. So both AC and BC will be poor. Okay. So let's let's try it over there. Everybody, are you clear about it? Say in the chat box yes or no. Are you having any doubt about this, beta? Both AC and BC are poor. Am I clear, beta? Fine. 
एनी वन एंड डाउट सो बोथ ए सी बी सी पुअर सो माई समरी टिल नाउ एज इन कंडक्टिव एरिंग लॉस ए सी इज पुअर बी सी इज नॉर्मल बट इन एस एन एच एल बोथ ए सी बी सी आर पुअर ओके ना वेरी गुड इन एस एन एच एल आशीष इन एस एन एच एल इन सेंसरी न्यूरल एरिंग लॉस द कॉकलिया इज नॉट वर्किंग प्रॉपरली एयर कंडक्शन ऑल्सो गोज टू कॉकलिया Bone motion also goes to cochlea. If cochlea is not working properly, both AC and BC will be poor. Okay. Now, there are we once again hear me. In sensory neural hearing loss, cochlea is not working properly. Air conduction also goes to cochlea. Bone motion also goes to cochlea. If cochlea is not working properly, both AC and BC will be poor. Is it okay? Fine. Now, let us start the. Pure tone audiometry, PTA, or audiogram. Everybody focus on the topic now. This is the background of the topic. Okay, everybody. Pure tone audiometry, PTA, or audiogram. Let us focus on this topic now. Okay, now this is a very common thing which we get every ear patient with hearing loss would bring this report to us. Let us learn how to analyze it. Okay, now guys, first of all, everybody focus. PTA is a subjective test meter. PTA is a subjective test. Subjective test means subject has to respond. Better. Look at screen, everybody. Can you see over here? This is the audiologist. Audiologist does the test. Okay. This is the patient. Patient. Okay. This is the patient. Audiologist does the test, and this is the patient. Better. Okay. Now, guys, audiometry or pure tone audiometry is done in soundproof room. Soundproof room. Better. This is a soundproof room where the audiologist is sitting. in the outer room and the patient sitting in the inner room and they have got a glass through which they can see each other can you see one thing patient is responding yes or no can you hear it yes can you hear it no it means it's a subjective test means a subject dependent test it's a subject dependent test first of all pte pta is a subjective test of hearing it's a subjective test of audiometry is a subjective test of hearing beta now Again, can you see we do the both testing air conduction and bone conduction. This is air conduction meter. The earphones will give you air conduction. When you use earphones, you are using air conduction meter. Okay, now everybody, this is the bone conduction. Can you see meter? Bone conduction is done with the help of mastoid stimulator. Can you see mastoid stimulator? mastoid stimulator this is the mastoid stimulator and as in direct contact with the mastoid bone it's a bone conduction and my dear friends bone conduction is always tested preferably by masking the other ear the other ear should not participate in the test by guys look at me when you're doing bone conduction it might stimulate both cochlea please understand bone conduction because skull is a bone this this side sound can go through skull to other side also so this ear can participate can interfere with the testing of the diseased ear so the the bone conduction testing should preferably always be done with masking the other ear what is masking masking mean to keep the other ear busy with some other sound what is masking to keep the other ear busy with some other sound and you know the rule is one ear can hear one sound at one time once again bone conduction should always be tested after masking the other ear because i have i have a worry that this ear might also be stimulated with the help of bone conduction sound because skull is a bone and this sound by a by a skull may enter the other cochlea i want to keep this ear busy with some other sound and that is called masking so masking mean to keep the other ear busy with some other sound the rule is one ear can hear one sound at one time so when this ear is busy in its own sound it will not interfere in the testing of the diseased ear okay so bone conduction is always tested the always tested with the masking the other ear now frequency is tested in pta this is very important guys you must have seen tuning fork test beta before sending the patient for audiometry the ent doctor will generally do the pure the tuning fork tuning fork are three 256 512 and 1024 hertz mostly 512 hertz mostly 5 mostly 512 hertz beta mostly 
गाइस बट यू नो व्हाट ह्यूमन स्पीच इज नॉट ओनली दीज थ्री फ्रीक्वेंसी बेटा 250 512 1024 ट्यूनिंग फोक मोस्टली चेक्स 512 हर्ट्ज लुक एट योर कॉकलिया बेटा लुक एट कॉकलिया बड़ी दिस इज कॉकलिया गाइस दिस इज द बेजल टर्न ऑफ कॉकलिया दिस इज द बेजल टर्न ऑफ कॉकलिया द बेजल टर्न ऑफ कॉकलिया सेंसेस हाई फ्रीक्वेंसी साउंड्स बेटा योर मल्टीपल चॉइस क्वेश्चन आल्सो एंड द एपेक्स दिस इज कॉल्ड द एपेक्स ऑफ कॉकलिया द एपेक्स ऑफ कॉकलिया सेंसेस लो frequency sounds this is the basic rule the basal tone of cochlea senses high frequency sounds and apex senses low frequency sounds for example please see like we have got different different frequencies here 8000 hertz maybe here 6000 hertz maybe here 4000 hertz here 2000 hertz then here 1000 hertz then 500 hertz and 250 hertz did you notice one thing every part of cochlea is responsible for uh, hearing specific frequency sound if you want to check the whole of cochlea you must give different different frequency sound not only 512 like in tuning fork so tuning fork is just a basic test so in pure tone audiometry we check with different different frequencies what are those frequencies let us write down frequencies tested in pta are guys number 1 250, then 500 hertz, hertz, brother, hertz, 1000, 2000, 4000, 6000, and 8000 hertz. My dear friends, tuning fork is mostly done with 512. Somewhere here, is it a complete test of hearing tuning fork? No, it's only one frequency being tested. But you know, in the as you just saw the various part of cochlea are responsible for hearing different different frequency i must do this test with different different frequencies so that i am able to check each and every part of the cochlea okay now when i say low frequency hearing loss high frequency hearing loss i actually say if the problem is on this side it is called low frequency hearing loss if the problem is on this side beta it is called high frequency hearing loss okay so when whenever you see a report it's a low frequency hearing loss means the loss is toward 250 500 side if somebody says high frequency hearing loss the loss is toward 6000 8000 hertz side what are the most important human speech frequencies 500 1000 and 2000 hertz are the most important human speech frequencies means most of our language words sounds are actually in this area actually okay fine so that's the basic you know concept of what are frequencies tested over there is this much clear everybody in the chat box please tell me is this clear everyone now okay all okay beta fine now Now this is the audiogram which we get the raw audiogram without filling anything. This is the raw audiogram you you see and we'll fill it gradually, beta. Now please see everybody. Everybody, this much is clear, everyone. Okay, fine. Can you see this is the frequency? Very good. Other people, are you able to understand? Very good. So frequency is in hertz. Frequency is in hertz. Okay, so this is can you see five hundred thousand, two thousand, four thousand, six thousand, eight thousand. Very good. This is decibel beta. Decibel beta. So can you see zero decibel, ten, twenty, twenty, thirty, hundred decibel beta. So this side, please see. Let me enlarge it for you. One side is frequency written. Other side is decibel, mean intensity of sound beta. Decibel mean intensity, how strong the sound is beta. Okay. Now guys, can you tell me what is the normal human vision? Vision, beta. Vision. Eye testing. Six by six is normal. Six by six is normal, na. So something has to be called normal to label some people with the normal hearing, some people with the poor hearing, beta. So like vision has got six by six normal vision. We have defined in audiology what is the normal hearing. Guys, please understand. Up to twenty-five decibel is normal hearing, beta. If your hearing test results are coming. About twenty-five decibel, up to twenty-five decibel, you have got normal hearing, beta. Normal hearing. Okay. If your hearing test results are coming below that line, you have got a hearing loss. Okay, guys. One one concept, everybody. This is the audiogram, beta. 
when you fill the audiogram, the, something like this kind of line appear. Don't worry, you'll understand each bit of it once we finish the session. But this is a filled up audiogram. Can you see, beta? 0, 10, 20, 25. Beta. Everybody, this is the line of 25. Beta. What decibel? If you are hearing results are coming in this zone, you have got a normal hearing. Beta. This is normal hearing zone. Beta. This is the normal hearing zone. But if your hearing results are coming in this zone, this zone, beta. This zone. Can you see the green green curve, beta? This is the hearing loss zone, beta. Then you are suffering from hearing loss zone. This is the hearing loss, beta. Okay. If your hearing is up till 25 decibel, like you know, your hearing result should be up till 25 decibel, then you have got a normal hearing. But if your hearing lines, this can you see the blue lines over there? If they're coming below this line of 25, it means that hearing is actually having a hearing loss. That person has got a hearing loss. Beta. Okay. So, the, the upper zone, now see this one will be more clear. Beta. See this one. Beta. This you will be more clear now. Can you see 0, 10, 20, 25. Beta. This is the 25. Can you see the C blue color? Beta? If your hearing lines are coming in the C blue color, this one, this one, the this is a normal hearing zone. If you come little below that, it's a mild hearing loss. This one, beta. this is the mild hearing loss over this one. Then, if you if your hearing lines come still below in this zone, imagine your hearing lines are coming in this zone, beta. this zone. It means you have got a moderate hearing loss. If you're coming in this zone, severe loss. And if you're come, if your hearing results are coming in this zone, black one, you have got profound. Profound means more than 90, but more than 90 is profound. Profound means you can say almost deaf vision. I don't use this word deaf, but, but you know, profound means which you think like, you know, in your known circle or somebody you saw in the clinics or somewhere, people who, the children who cannot hear at all, like they have got a profound hearing loss. Guys, in this result, please understand, in audiometry, your hearing result should be more towards zero. More towards zero. Understand, beta? More towards zero you are here. Look at me. More towards zero you are here. More towards zero you are, better hearing you have. Better hearing you have, beta. Don't score 100 out of 100 in this test, beta. If you're scoring 100 out of 100 in this test, it means you are deaf, beta. You are deaf. Don't think otherwise, okay? Don't think, oh, I scored 100 out of 100 in this test. If your line are coming at 100, means you are deaf. It means your hearing is starting at 100 decibel. It means you're only hearing when there's somebody, you know, beating the drum over there. That is the first sound you're hearing. So basically, audiometry is about calculating the threshold of hearing. Threshold means what is the lowest sound you can appreciate. In a simple word, the, all these test results are what? Basically, what we're trying to do, we're trying to see your threshold of hearing at different, different frequencies. And threshold means what is the lowest minimal sound which you can appreciate. I think more towards zero you are, better hearing you have. The steel plate is there. If a needle falls on the steel plate, even that sound you can hear means your, your hearing is perfect, wonderful hearing. But if somebody is beating the drums and you can't hear that, that it means your hearing is profoundly hearing loss. There is profound hearing loss. Am I clear about fine? So don't score 100 out of 100 in this in this uh, uh, test. Don't tell, tell oh, I scored 100 out 100 out of 100 means you are deaf. Beta. Better towards zero remain. Be more towards zero you are, better hearing you are. Is this curve clear with everybody? I hope everyone is clear about this curve. Beta. Can you see? Now I'll clean this and please understand like a doctor. Oh, I know. Like the C blue color, the first zone, this one is the norm, the number one. This uh, my hearing result should be in this zone. Any line coming below 25 will be poor. Better. Am I clear? Say yes or no in the chat box, then we go forward. More toward more more down you will come, you will more hearing loss. Mild loss, moderate loss, severe loss, you know, profound loss. Better. Okay? Am I clear everybody? This concept is clear. Any line up till 25 will be counted normal. Any line below that will be counted as a hearing loss better. Or poor hearing better. Okay. Can you comment in the chat box? Is that okay? Okay, wonderful. 
Great, great. Please, please uh, engage in the chat box so that we get an idea what you are doing. Okay, fine. Very nice. Now, there are symbols used in the audiogram. You must have seen there are a lot of, did you notice one thing? We are using a lot of symbols here. Please see, can you see? Symbols being used in the audiogram. Let us interpret these symbols better. Okay. Very simple again. There are two tests being done. Air conduction, bone conduction better. Guys, please see. Circle, triangle, square, cross. They are air conduction symbol. And BC bone conduction are brackets. Beta. Any symbol like bracket, B for bracket, beta, bracket. Any bracket like symbol, any bracket like symbols will be bone conduction symbol. Very simple circle, triangle, square, cross are air conduction symbol. Beta. Okay. And the bracket like symbol, like you can see bracket like symbol over here, bracket B for bracket also to remember. Fine. Yes. Now, please understand, beta, please understand. If let's revise one thing, circle. Triangle, square, cross are air conduction symbol. Okay, I know bracket like symbol are bone conduction symbol. This much is clear, beta? No problem. Let us be crystal clear about the topic. At the end of the session, I want you to be really saying, oh, audiogram made easy. Okay, fine. Now, just one more thing, beta. Please understand. Circle is AC. Yes. Of which year? Right year. Your multiple choice question. Circle represent what? AC. Yes, AC. But which year? Right year. Very good. And let me answer, beta. Please see. The, the, the cross is AC. Of which year? Left year, beta. Very good. Very good. Am I clear, beta? Circle is AC. Right year. Cross is AC. Left year, beta. So I know now, oh, circle and cross can be independent multiple choice questions also. Am I clear? Fine. Perfect. Lines are, this is clear, beta. Now, guys, one more thing for a higher level thing you should know. The, when you had like two, three circle, beta, you did different, different tests of air conduction. Air conduction is always joined with the continuous line, beta. Continuous line. Air conduction is always joined with the continuous line, beta. And bone conduction is always joined with the broken line, beta. Broken line. Can you see what a broken line? Okay, again, very simple to remember. Broken line, B for broken, B for BC. Better. Okay, how to identify the line of AC and BC? Guys, a very specific question for INICT may use this one. Any symbol connected with the continuous line will be air conduction line. Any symbol connected with the broken line is the bone conduction line. Better. Am I clear? Better? Fine. So, guys, bone conduction B. You can remember B for bracket. Bracket like symbol are bone conduction symbol. And broken line is also for bone conduction. Is it okay, beta? Will you remember easily? Broken line or the bracket like symbol represent the bone conduction line, beta. Okay? Chalo. Is it clear, beta? Everyone? Now, one more universal rule is that if the line are in the blue color, it's for the left ear. And the line are in the right color, it's for the uh, the line on the red color are for the right ear. Beta. Blue color lines are for the left ear. Red color line are for the right ear. Beta. Am I clear? Beta? Fine. Yes. B for bracket. B for broken. Uh, let's make audiogram made simple. Beta. How to identify bone conduction? Bracket like symbol. Bone conduction. B for bracket. Broken line connecting the symbol represent bone conduction line. Beta. Okay. Fine. So one more thing. Blue color is for the left ear and red color for the right ear. Beta. Okay. Fine. This much is clear. Beta. All symbols we have clarified better. This is the international norms which we follow. They are the, they are the, everybody should follow same colors and same symbols actually. Okay. Now, let us see the normal audiogram. And my dear friends, I, I really, you know, uh, have full confidence that you will be able to interpret on your own better. Now, everyone, zero, so let's focus here better. Zero, can you see zero over there? 10, 20, 25 better. 25. So, this is the 25 line beta. Okay. And I'm sure you remember, my dear friends, this is the normal hearing zone. Any test result coming in this area will be normal hearing. That's why this is the normal audiogram. First of all, everybody comment on this. Are you able to understand this or not? Please see. Can you see? Oh, is it the normal audiogram? Normal audiogram because my lines are coming above 25. The li any line above 25 is normal. Beta. Now, first of all, this is normal. Now, fine. Now, please see in this. 
वट इज दिस लाइन बेटा द ब्रैकेट लाइक सिंबल आर बोन कंडक्शन द क्रॉस इज एयर कंडक्शन एंड ब्लू कलर शोज इट्स अ लेफ्ट ईयर बेटा इट्स अ लेफ्ट ईयर बेटा Everybody, be sure about this one. We are not in a hurry to finish it. I want to be super confident about the topic. Even if the question comes at the highest level, we must be able to tackle it. Better. Look at the one. There are two lines here. Can you see the 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 bracket symbol bone conduction cross is for the air conduction. Blue color is for the left ear, and this is the left normal audiogram. Better. Are you sure about this one? Better. First of all, everyone, please be sure about this question. First of all, am I clear? Can you identify B C? can you identify ac can you identify why it is left blue color anyway cross is for the left ear beta and you know cross is for ac yes but left ear okay am i clear everybody understood normal audiogram you can interpret okay now one interesting point to keep in mind a jugad beta a jugad let me tell you for the exam it will be very helpful guys please understand if you are confused between ac and bc line still let me make the life easy for you guys upper line is always of bc beta upper line is always of bone conduction beta upper line is always of bone conduction beta this is not due to science beta it is not due to the science sound it is due to the technical calibration of the audiometry machine in which bone conduction has been given advantage over the air conduction by the engineers sound engineers beta not because of any any scientific reason behind it but it is never possible that air conduction line can come above the bone conduction line in any result you see in any book you will see upper line will always be bone conduction beta so upper line is always bone conduction this is one jugad you can remember in the exam and it can make your life easy but my dear friends i trust you you know bracket like symbol are for the bc also but you know what in exam we are in a hurry there are 19 subject different going on in the mind you want to know oh which is ac which is bc then upper line is always of bc beta am i clear beta fine it's not due to technical calibration of machine it is not due to science beta it is due to technical calibration of the machine beta okay fine understood okay will you remember it beta upper and all will be c beta can we go further my dear friends get ready i trust you guys and you will think with me everyone conductive hearing loss my dear friend conductive hearing loss what will happen chl one by one will tell me everybody what will be the air conduction in this just think about the same pathway air con conductive hearing loss goes through all the four compartment of train beta air conduction air conduction will be poor very good poor beta air conduction will be poor beta bone conduction everybody now think beta don't forget bone conduction checks cochlea and eighth nerve so bone conduction is poor in snhl this is chl beta once again bone conduction checks cochlea and eighth nerve this is not this is not snhl it is chl in chl cochlea and eighth nerve are normal because we know now bone conduction check cochlea and eighth nerve so bc will be normal in chl very good and there will be a b gap positive a b gap positive a b gap positive this is the star feature to remember about chl beta a b gap means ab gap means conductive hearing loss my dear friend let us make our life easy audiogram made easy beta ab gap means conductive hearing loss my dear friends okay guys any doubt anyone has in conductive hearing loss ac will be poor bc will be normal because bc is poor in snhl this is chl okay are you ready can we see beta can you see the audiogram beta now all of you tell me is it right or left right or left beta is it right or left Yes, it is left because of blue color. Blue color. Okay. Yes. Now, everyone, please see. Now, this is which line? Upper line is always of bone conduction. And can you see bracket-like symbol, brother? Bracket-like symbol, bone conduction, brother. Guys, BC is normal. My dear friend, you know zero, ten, twenty-five, twenty-five up to this is normal, brother. Am I clear? Fine, everybody. Fine. Now, next one. This is what, brother? This is which line, brother? This is the air conduction line ac is poor anything below 25 will be poor beta this is below 25 na below 25 okay below 25 can you see bc is normal ac is poor okay my dear friend and what is the name of this gap this gap is called a b 
gap, a b gap beta. Whenever you see a gap between two lines, it has got conductive Ehring loss element beta. Am I clear beta? Can you see the gap between two lines? A b gap. Yes, very good, very good. So this is the upper line of b c and then a c beta. My dear friends, I would want you to look at this audiogram and be confident about it. That once again, beta. Let me remove this marking and you see exam question comes. How would you tackle it? You will say, oh, where is 25 here? 25. And you will say, oh, this is BC. This is AC because upper line always of the BC, beta. And BC is normal, AC is poor, and this is called AB gap. And AB gap means conductive Ehring loss. Beta. Guys, this is a fundamental feature of the conductive Ehring loss. There has to be some AB gap, beta. Am I clear? Everybody, yes or no? Are you clear about this one? Everybody, are you sure? Can you diagnose conductive Ehring loss? Doc, think like a doctor, not like a medical student. One day or the other, a relative is going to come to your house with the audiometry report in the hand. We should be able to comment, is it conductive loss or SNHL, beta? Okay? One day, one relative will come to your house, beta. With one report of the audiometry in hand, beta, batana kya hai? Or what the problem? At least you tell conductive or SNHL, beta. Very good. There's point to remember. AB gap means conductive wearing loss, beta. Okay, fine. How much is the how much is the significant AB gap? Is 15 decibel beta. 15 decibel, my dear friend. 15 decibel beta. Okay. How much beta? How much different between two line beta? B C and A C line. How much the gap beta? The gap minimum gap should be 15 decibel. Okay. Now let us go further. Sensory neural hearing loss. All of you think with me, beta. In SNHL, if you remember, in SNHL, both AC, BC are poor. In SNHL, both AC and BC are poor, beta. If you remember, SNHL means cochlea is not working properly, beta. When cochlea is not working properly, you go through air conduction or you go through bone conduction, eventually you are entering the cochlea only. So in SNHL, both AC and BC are poor, beta. Am I clear, beta? Fine? Fine. Now, please see over here. I would not say anything. You ask yourself, right ear or left ear? Blue color, left ear. And we are seeing the cross over there. Can you see? This is 0, 10. This is what, beta? This is what? 25. Can you see? Both BC and AC line are below 25. Can you understand? Both BC and AC poor means SNHL, beta. Any line below 25 is poor. Am I clear, beta? Fine. Fine. Uh, Christian Matthew, if different frequency have got different type of AB gap, then we take the average of 500, 1000 and 2000. But I told you, most important frequency are 500, 1000 and 2000. And if there are different, different AB gap, we take an average of the gap at 500, 1000 and 2000 hertz. But okay, fine. Is it clear to everybody? Both AC, BC poor is? Yes, SNHL. So, point to remember. Both AC, BC poor means SNHL. Both AC, BC poor means SNHL. But Okay, can we summarize better? Two points to remember. AB gap means CHL. Both AC, BC poor means SNHL. Can take home messages better. Audiogram made easy. AB gap means CHL. Both AC, BC poor means sensory neural hearing loss better. Okay, fine. Now, what about the mixed hearing loss better? Mix means CHL plus SNHL. Means somebody's middle ear is also having problem and cochlea also having problem. Guys, if it's a mixed hearing loss, both feature will combine beta. What was the feature of SNHL? Both AC, BC poor. What was the feature of conductive hearing loss? AB gap. In mixed hearing loss, number one, both AC, BC poor with number two, AB gap. Beta. With AB gap. Am I clear, beta? Fine. Okay. Is this clear, beta? Fine. In mixed hearing loss, you know, they, both ACBC poor is SNHL, AB gap is CHL. If there is somebody having mixed hearing loss, means middle ear problem, inner ear problem. So the gap, the thing will be both ACBC poor with AB gap. Okay, fine. Everybody, are you ready for the quiz time, beta? Everyone, are you ready for the quiz? One quick quiz till this time. This, this till this much we did. Let's have a quiz on this, beta. Are you ready? Okay, let's have a quick quiz. On this one, I'm going to show you four audiogram. Beta. All of you see the first one. This is the first one. Beta. First audiogram. Beta. Can you tell me? In the exam, they don't follow symbols. They just give you some blank points like that. Don't think the exam is a typical of this thing. Imagine this come. Beta. Everybody, tell me what is the interpretation of the first audiogram. Beta. First audiogram, what is the interpretation? 
I am waiting for your response. I would not answer. I would wait for your response. There's the test, the quiz. You have to participate actively. Everyone, there are so many people, hundred, more than 100 people are there. That's wonderful. For audiometry, 100 people are there. I'm glad that you want to learn. Audiometry is a dry topic, but we'll make it a little interesting, easy. Okay. What is the interpretation, beta? Wonderful. This is normal hearing. Very nice. All of you be sure about it, beta. Normal hearing. Very nice. Very nice, beta. Can we go further? Normal hearing, very good. Now everybody get ready. Number two, second audiogram, beta. Second audiogram. This one, beta. I'm waiting for your response, everybody. Normal. Yes, first is normal. Yes, but what second, beta? What about second? It's a quiz time. You have to participate in the quiz. Yes, yes, yes. Tell me, what is the interpretation of the number two? Imagine this question comes in the real need, PG, INICT, or FMG examination also. How would you answer this question? Yes, it is. It is what? Very good. Both ACBC poor is SNHL. SNH. Very fantastic. Fantastic. Very good. Very good. Did you see about SNHL? SNHL. Now. Now, third one. Can you see the third one? Third one. Okay. Nothing written, no symbol used. Sometimes they do like this, beta. I want to prepare for the real time examination, not the ideal thing. Paper is not always ideal, beta. Third audiogram, can you tell me what it is, beta? Upper line is always what? Bone conduction. Don't forget, if you are confused, I told you golden jugard, beta. Golden jugard is what? Upper line is always of bone conduction. Yes, it is conductive hearing loss. Somebody said rightly. Upper line of BC and then AC. And this gap is called AB gap. And AB gap is conductive hearing loss. Phenomenal, beta. Phenomenal. Perfect. And now come the fourth one. Fourth one, beta. Let us see. Fourth one, beta. Everyone, please try the fourth one, my dear friends. You have made my day. Yes, fourth one, beta. Yes, now let's go fourth one, beta. Fourth one. Fourth one. What do you think about fourth one, beta? Yes, 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 yes. Very good. 25 is this one, na? BC is above, B, this is 25, beta. BC is poor, AC is poor, and there is this gap is called A, B gap, means it's a mixed hearing loss, beta. You are already audiologist, beta. Wonderful. It's a mixed hearing. Both BC and AC are poor, below 25, and there is AB gap, and that's called mixed hearing loss. Did you see, beta, how beautifully you answer all these four, beta? Normal to conductive to SNHL to mixed, even you diagnose, beta. Amazing, beta. Let us go further, beta. Two special dips in audiogram and two special audiogram and four MCQs of your paper. Visual and written question also, beta. Very good. Two special dips, beta, first of all. There are two special dips and both are asked in your paper, beta. First of all, number one. Number one dip is Carhartt's notch, beta. Number one dip is Carhartt's notch, my dear friend, Carhartt's notch. And Carhartt's notch is a dip at 2000 hertz in BC and this is seen in otosclerosis, beta. Carhartt's notch is a dip at 2000 hertz in bone conduction curve and it's a feature of otosclerosis and we know otosclerosis has got a conductive hearing loss. So in otosclerosis you will see two findings beta. One is conductive hearing loss because otosclerosis means stay piece is fixed. Stay piece problem means conductive hearing loss. So conductive hearing loss will be showing AB gap plus you will be seeing number two. Second finding will be Carhartt's notch. What is Carhartt's notch? Dip at 2000 hertz in bone conduction curve. Am I clear to find? Can we see this one? Everybody focus on the autosclerosis audiogram. This exactly same has come in the paper also. Right or left? Beta? Right or left? Yes, this is left. Beta. This is which line? Beta? This is which line? BC. Upper line always BC. I can see bracket like symbol. Bone conduction symbol. Beta. This is AC. Air conduction. Beta. What is this gap called? This gap is called AB gap. AB gap means conductive hearing loss. Beta. Okay, what is this frequency beta? 2000 hertz. Can you see dip at 2000 hertz in bone conduction curve? This dip is called Carhartt's notch beta. Can you see the red curve? This dip is called Carhartt's notch. Everyone, let's, let's interpret the audiogram. It's a left one, yes, because blue color. Cross anyway is left beta. Cross symbol means left air conduction. Upper line of bone conduction, then air conduction. 
Between the two lines, there's a gap called AB gap. AB gap means conductive wearing loss. And I can see over here, please see. Can, can you see at 2000 hertz, there's a dip. And this dip is called Carat's notch of otosclerosis. Any doubts anyone has? Is okay? So, I know today, in otosclerosis, there are two findings in audiometry. Number one, conductive wearing loss, AB gap. Number two, dip at 2000 hertz in bone conduction curve. And that dip is called Carhartt's notch. Is it okay? Second dip. Second dip is seen in noise induced hearing loss. Noise induced hearing loss, beta. Noise induced will damage your cochlea. So, number one, it will cause SNHL. And number two, this dip is called acoustic dip. And this dip is seen at 4000 hertz in AC, BC, both. My dear friends, Carat's notch was at 2000 hertz in bone conduction and noise inducing loss acoustic dip is at 4000 hertz in AC, BC, both. Okay, very good. Wonderful, beta. Can we go further, beta? Can we see this one, beta? Let us see the acoustic dip of noise inducing loss, beta. Right or left? It's left again. Cross is for left, anyway. Cross is left, beta. Which is BC, yes. My dear friend, you know that golden jugaad, beta. BC is always upper line, beta. This is what, beta? AC. What is this frequency? 4000 hertz. And can you see a dip at 4000 hertz? And this dip is called acoustic dip, my dear friend. Both AC, BC are coming down. It's SNHL, beta. Where the dip is there? 4000 hertz. So, let us revise one more time. Acoustic dip is seen at 4000 hertz in air conduction and bone conduction curve. And it's a feature of noise-induced hearing loss. Okay, fine. That's okay? Fine. Now, can we go further, beta? Now, this much is clear, everybody. Two, two dips are clear. So, let us go further to two special audiograms, beta. Two special audiograms, beta. Two special dip, two special audiogram. Quickly revise two special dip with me. Carat's notch, 2000 hertz dip in 2000 hertz, uh, 2000 hertz dip. Once again, Carat's notch, a dip at 2000 hertz in bone conduction curve, a feature of otosclerosis. And acoustic dip, a dip at 4000 hertz in AC and BC, a feature of noise induced hearing loss, beta. Okay? Now, two special audiogram. Beta. Number one, press by acoustics. Have you heard the word press biopia? Press biopia means age related vision problem, and press by acoustics means age related SNHL. And I'm sure you would agree, age will damage both ears. Beta. It will be bilateral. Age will damage both the cochlea or the so it will be bilateral problem. Beta. Age related hearing loss. Beta. Age related SNHL and both side cochlea will be getting damaged. Beta. With the age, okay. There's another disease, pressed by meniers, beta. One is pressed by acoustics, other is meniers. I'm sure you remember, meniers is like glaucoma of the ear. Meniers damages cochlea due to high endolymphatic pressure. So there is gradual damage of cochlea due to high endolymphatic pressure, beta. Again, cochlea getting damaged, beta. But meniers is classically unilateral. Once again, beta. The press by acoustics is mostly bilateral. Meniers is mostly unilateral. Mostly unilateral. Very good. Fine. Now, let's look at these two cochlea. First of all, let me talk about by for the meniers. Now, meniers will damage the apex of cochlea first. Apex. This is the apex. This is apex is damaged first. So, meniers will cause low frequency SNHL in early stages, beta. In early stages. In early stages, because meniers starts with damage from the apex side first, so meniers will lead to low frequency SNHL in early stages. Let us compare this with the press by acusis. Guys, press by acusis starts its damage from the basal turn of cochlea. Okay, do you remember? The basal turn senses high frequency sounds. So, press by acusis will cause high frequency SNHL in early stages. Don't forget this point. Very commonly asked thing nowadays is that which part of cochlea hears what? That is basal turn hears the high frequency sounds. Apex senses low frequency sounds. Meniers start damaging the apex first. So, in early stage of meniers, we see low frequency SNHL. Whereas the Press by acusis damages the basal turn of cochlea first. Therefore, in press by acusis, we see high frequency SNHL in early stages. Okay. Now, let us see this gap difference better. Can you see better? 
two types of aldegramata presbycusis versus meniosus beta everybody please see presbycusis versus meniosus beta am i clear beta fine look at screen da now presbycusis is mostly bilateral meniosus is mostly unilateral Pre presbycusis causes high frequency snh in early stages and meniosus causes low frequency snh in early stages put an arrow therefore presbycusis causes sloping curve beta sloping like this one sloping curve and meniosus causes a rising curve beta rising meniosus causes rising curve beta rising curve how to remember beta age slopes you down towards your grave beta age slopes you down so age wala curve is sloping curve beta meniosus beta rising meniosus rising curve beta so guys this is clear meniosus will cause unilateral problem and a rising audiogram age will cause bilateral problem and sloping audiogram beta okay now let me show you both beta all of you focus on the screen right now imagine this question comes in your paper inict paper neat pg paper or the future upcoming next paper now please see this is the audiogram please do not do this blunder in the paper and say oh there is ab gap and ab gap means conductive wearing loss and you mark conductive wearing loss there please don't do this mistake guys there are two ear here beta one is right ear other is left ear beta you can't create oh ab gap is there and smile and mark ab gap oh conductive wearing loss wonderful answer but that's not the wonderful answer we create a silly mistake over there don't say oh ab gap right is different ear left is different ear right ear is normal ear beta okay right is normal ear very good right is normal ear left has got what beta please see both ac and bc are poor it is snhl beta can you see beta right is normal right is normal and left has got snhl because both acbc are poor and can you see the rising pattern of the audiogram beta can you see rising pattern audiogram now see everybody now see on the screen everyone all the feature which you saw please see meniosus involve one ear yes in this audiogram also right is normal left has got snhl and meniosus has got the low frequency hearing loss so there is a rising audiogram and i can see the rising audiogram because the hearing loss is mostly toward the low frequency side i told you 250 500 are the low frequency side of the hearing loss beta am i clear fine is, is this meniosus audiogram is clear to you or no meniosus involve one ear that's why right ear is normal meniosus causes snhl yes meniosus causes low frequency snhl visible therefore it causes rising audiogram beta am i clear okay fine okay can we go further let's do the reverse of this beta press by acusis you know both ears are involved mostly can you see this is right ear right this is left ear beta red right blue left is it clear everybody meaning is clear everybody and can you see both are coming down and both have got which type of curve sloping curve it is sloping down beta sloping down because the more hearing loss is toward the high frequency this side beta this this is the high frequency side beta okay i hope everybody clear about it beta meniosus involve one ear presbycusis involve both ears so in this right and left both are coming down and the slope is like this beta sloping curve beta everybody please comment in the comment section are you clear about the difference between the meniosus curve which is unilateral disease and a rising audiogram because of low frequency snhl and presbycusis is mostly bilateral and high frequency snhl therefore sloping audiogram beta yes or no beta i want to hear from you is this is this understandable or not is it understandable okay mm mhm clear very good all of you beta all of you okay is doable beta they look different they look difficult but the purpose is audiogram to be made easy for all the medical students beta because your future doctors you should know all these things beta okay very good now guys one more little higher level thing old oxity drug induced hearing loss like amino glycosides can damage the hearing beta drug induced hearing loss also damages this part first beta what is this part beta basal turn of cochlea first therefore old oxity also causes high frequency snhl in early stages am i clear auto frequency the auto toxicity causes high frequency snhl in early stages beta because i know now it it is damaging the basal turn of cochlea first beta okay now therefore to diagnose the early stage of the auto toxicity 
we have a special test called high frequency audiometry. Can you see high frequency audiometry? Can you see what was the normal audiometry testing beta? 250 to 8000 hertz. But look at this one beta. 9,000, 10,000, 12,000, 14, 16, 18,000 hertz beta. Can you see beta? Can, can I bring it? 9,000. I am sure you remember normal Puritan audiometry finished at 8,000 hertz mostly. 250 to 8,000. This is starting from 9,000 going till the 18,000 actually. This is high frequency audiometry and high frequency audiometry is special test used to diagnose early stage of ototoxicity. This is a Ames question, INICT question. High frequency audiometry is a specialized test. It's not normal audiometry. It's a specialized test used to diagnose the ototoxicity. Am I clear? Fine. Very good. Guys, at the end now, everybody get ready. It's the quiz time. It's the end of, we'll, at the last five minutes, everybody get ready to answer a few questions before we finish this session. Okay. Are you ready, beta? First question. Which of the following is applicable to Carhartt's notch in otosclerosis? You will say, sir, we know it. Okay. Dip at 2000 BC. Dip at 2000 hertz in AC or 4000 hertz in AC or 4000 hertz in BC. I am sure you know Carhartt's notch is dip at 2000 hertz in bone conduction curve. This is an easy question, beta. And there are few questions. Easy, beta. Easy. Don't worry. Okay. Now, this is clear, beta. Carhartt's notch otosclerosis. Now. Which type of audiogram is seen in early stage of Meniere's disease? I'm waiting, beta. Meniere's, which type of audiogram, beta? Sloping or rising or dips at 4,000, dip at 2,000, beta. Everybody, can you answer, beta? Question number two, what's the answer, everybody? What's the answer? Is it a sloping audiogram or rising audiogram, beta? Perfectly answered, everyone. Now you are saying, let us answer the next question, beta. Which type of audiogram is seen in early stage of mean years? Mean years causes what? Rising audiogram, yes. And age wala sloping audiogram. Age slopes you down, mean years rising, mean years rising audiogram. Very good. Perfect, beta. perfect. Okay, I'm clear. Everybody get ready to answer this question. Your classical need PG, INICT, FMG exam question, beta. Interpret the audiogram given the picture. No history is given generally, beta. They don't give an history, but I'm waiting for your answer, but interpret the audiogram. This is classical, very, you know, expected question in the upcoming exam. Maybe need PG, INICT or the FMG examination. Better. Please write what is the diagnosis. Please type what is the diagnosis of this patient. Better. Is it venous, press bicuses, otosclerosis? Yes, absolutely correct. My dear friends, you have really now got the hang of it. Upper line is always of bone conduction. This is air conduction and this is AB gap, 2000 hertz dip and that indicate Carhartt's notch and Carhartt's notch is a feature of otosclerosis, my dear friends. Phenomenal job, a phenomenal job. Very good. Otosclerosis is no history given. Still, you made a diagnosis over there. What can be better than this? Better? Carhartt's notch, otosclerosis. Very good. Better. And one more question before we finish. 58-year-old male patient presenting with hearing loss and audiometry done. The audiogram is given below. What is the most probable diagnosis? Please write A, B, C, D for the question number four. The last question of the quiz today. Is it right SNHL or left CHL or bilateral CHL or pressed by acute suspita? Please see. What is the answer in this case, Bitta? 58 year old gentleman has been subject to audiometry and he has a hearing loss. Very good. Very good. He got it. Got it actually. It's a bilateral loss, Bitta. It's a bilateral loss and I'm sure you know it. It's a bilateral loss and the this patient has got a bilateral loss, which is SNHL, and the clue was 58 year old. What could have been there better? 58 year old means age inducing loss. The answer is pressed by acusis. And in this way, very clear, there is a there is a sloping audiogram also. Can you see there's a sloping audiogram also over there? Okay. So wonderful. Thank I mean it is it is absolutely pressed by acusis. And the clue was 58 year old also. And it is SNHL, both line A C B C and right ear, left ear, both are coming down. So this is D. So guys, this was my humble attempt. 
to make the audiogram little palatable for you, little enjoyable for you, little understandable for you. I do understand that it's a tough topic like, you know, ECG made easy. So either why not in ENT should have audiogram made easy for our beloved student. At the end of the day, we all are, all are working professionals in the future. We we'll become doctors. So whenever you see a patient in your in your other medicine clinic or you become a pediatrician in the future, if you see an audiogram, you'll have a smile on your face and you'll be able to say, oh, is it CHL or SNHL? And you now can understand press biacusis and the press, the otoxicity, noise inducing loss, menius audiogram especially also. Thank you very much, guys. Thanks a lot. And I hope you learned. Keep learning and keep evolving also. That's very, very important. Our best wishes from our side. The Dr. Royals would really love to do such kind of sessions for you on the app, on the YouTube live session also. Because the purpose is, each one should become really an able and a, and a very, you know, I would say dedicated, learned doctor of the future. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you.